And I'll give now the floor to Lisa Hamilton-Smith, horsewoman, entrepreneur, podcaster, speaker, mindset coach, and knowledge broker, and founder of Dream Team Life Podcast and the Global Mindset Summit. Welcome, Lisa. Pleasure to have you here today. Lovely to be here. So, guys, I am here. Welcome to the Global Unity First event, a total new beginning on the 2nd of January 2022. I'm so excited to be here because I stand for living a life you love. And I stand for helping people understand that they are worthy of living a life you love. And when life is hard, when you're living in a struggle, and oh my God, have we gone through a bit of a struggle in the last two years. I don't think any of us would have been left untouched by what we've gone through in the last two years. So this new year is a new beginning in so many ways. But I, I want to go back and, and, and tell you, what, why am I here to tell you about how you should be? Um, well, how you should be, but how, how can you handle a new beginning? How can you start over when life is hard? Why should we start over? How do we start over? I'm going to tell you a little bit about my life. I am the queen of resilience because I seem to have been handle, handed quite a few challenges in my life. Um, it started off, I had a big dream. Now, the moment you have big dreams, you have big problems <laughs> because if you want a lot, then life just gets in the way and tries to stop you. And the key is to be unstoppable and never, ever, ever give up. And in a way, when you have big dreams, you feel like you're starting over every time, like you think you're getting there and then something stops you and you fall down and you have to get up. In my case, literally, when I was a young kid, my dream was to have a horse. I wanted a horse more than anything in the world. I just loved horses. From about the age of four, every year I asked Father Christmas, we just gone through Christmas, I asked Father Christmas for a pony and he didn't bring one. And every year I'd sob into my pillow and I'd have a complete breakdown of the fact that I didn't have a pony. I sound like a complete brat, but it was just, this was my love, this was my dream, this was my passion. I was a bit of a brat, okay, to be fair. I was a normal person, I was a brat. But my grandmother one day, um, I was talking to her, I, I want a pony so much, she said, who do you think you are? You do not have the kind of family that can afford a pony. Get rid of that silly idea and grow up. I was like 11, okay? Luckily, and this is a key point, guys, I didn't listen to her. Can you imagine if I'd taken that into heart, how I would have absolutely destroyed my life before it even started? So anyway, um, that was the first one. Then I was talking to my primary teacher, Actually, before this, I was talking to my primary teacher. I said, I want to go to the Olympics. I want to ride in the Olympics and be this incredible rider. And she looked at me and she said, can you believe this? She said, who do you think you are? You can't do that. I mean, I can't believe a primary teacher said this, but I swear to you this happened. Her name was Miss Best. She's no longer with us. She's no longer on the planet. And she said to me, no, 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 that's not for you. You can't do that. That's, that's far-fetched. Just go, you know, just create an ordinary life. And my uncle said to me, when I said I had these big dreams of having lots of horses and riding the Olympics and doing incredible things. And he said to me, Lisa, I'm so worried about you. You know, you might get disappointed. Do you know, I would, if I were you, I wouldn't aim so high. Now, maybe because of this, because of these people in my life, I grew up with this determination that anytime anyone told me, you can't do that, I was determined to prove them wrong. Just as well, because I ended up in a situation where I married a man that I thought, I thought my dreams had come true. I married this amazing guy who's very wealthy and I had a very glamorous life. But you see, he beat me. And behind scenes, when no one was looking, he would tell me that I was a useless human being that had no right to life. And that if I didn't shut up, he would throw me off the balcony. Or if I didn't shut up, he would literally, in many cases, throw me to the floor. Now, I had, my dreams had always been having horses and I lived this beautiful life and I was now married and living this amazing life to all intents and purposes. That's what people saw. But behind closed doors, I was broken. And one day, um, when he'd thrown me to the floor, one more time, I lay there 
I was actually looking at the carpet. I was broken to pieces. I was looking at little details in the wool in the carpet. I'm laughing now, but I wasn't laughing then. And I, I dug into myself and I was like, this is not who I am. I'm worth more than somebody being thrown to the floor. I looked at the carpet and I focused on the piece of carpet and something inside of me said, get up, get up, get up now and keep moving away from this. You can be more. I swear, I heard this in my head. And from that day on, I, I got up, I healed my life, I moved away from my husband. Now, it wasn't instant, it took me two years because there was something inside of me that went, I am worthy of a life that I love and this isn't it. And I want my horses again and I want to feel joy again and I want to be in control of my life again. Somehow I have to start over. And I did, but not the way, like I, this story, you would think most people are like, oh, and I moved out that day and I, I rented a flat and I started my life. It wasn't like that at all. Sometimes starting over is just having the idea, the possibility, the dream, the hope that you can start over right now, this second with the smallest movement. In my case, getting up off that carpet looking at the carpet and getting up away from it. And in my head, beginning the idea, how do I get out? How do I remove myself from this situation? It took me two years, but I did it. And I started over living in my car. I was living in my car and I was training horses, but that's what I do for a living. That's my primary thing I've done all my life. I'm an equestrian coach. And I was, and I asked one of my clients, I, I know I'm living in my car and I, I'll, I'll be there tomorrow, but I did it. I said, oh my God, you can't do that. We have a garage you can live in. I was so, can you imagine? I'm so grateful to start over living in a garage, but it was a great step up from living in your car, trust me. And the funny part of this story is I was living in a Mercedes Benz. <laughs> the only thing I took from my marriage my husband said to me, you will get nothing. You will leave with nothing. So I took the only thing he was really annoyed. He'd signed over the car to me years earlier. And it was the only thing legally I could take. So I lived in my car with my Labrador. I had a chocolate Labrador. And then my friend said, you can move in the garage. So I parked the car outside and then I had a bed in the garage and it had a cupboard, which became my, my walk-in closet. And then all my storage was in the other part of the garage to one side. And I sat in that garage on my bed with my Labrador and my one possession parked outside. And I have never been so happy. And that, you know what? That is something we should all, I mean, I hope it never happens to you. I hope you never have to live in a garage. You never have to live in a car. But all of my life to that point had taught me, you know, don't listen to what people say. And yet I still fell into this abusive relationship. I still fell under the spell of being judged by someone else and believing what someone else told me, despite everything. I, as I grew, I'd fought and fought and fought, but then somehow I'd fallen under the spell. And I think that we have to remember that, you know, we start off so optimistic and enthusiastic and sometimes life beats us down. And in the last two years, life has even beaten me down. You know, I've struggled in the last year and I'm the mindset queen, I'm the resilience queen but I've struggled. I lost my home a uh, year before last. I'm gonna say last year because we feel like we've lost a year, haven't we? But it was actually the year before last. My mother died. So <clears throat> for the last 20 years, I lived with my mother and I had seven horses and ponies and I lived the dream of a life of training horses. I've skipped a bit, you know, so there's 20 years in between. <laughs> but basically I got my dream. I had my seven horses. I lived with my mother with my son as a lone parent. And I, I was having this dream life, living on my horses. And then my mother died. And the house, and I had a brother and a mortgage. And I had, I couldn't take over. And I had to basically start over yet again. I lost the house that I was living in for 20 years. And 
and there wasn't much money in it left. There wasn't enough to go buy another house. And there was a paddock and stable, so my seven horses and pennies, my business, my life attached. And my brother said to me, well, you can't keep that. It's all got to go. And I, I couldn't believe what he was saying. But this woman who remembered getting up off the floor, who remembered I was worthy of a life that I loved, who remembered that the joy of living in a garage because I was free from the suppression of a man who did not treat me well and whose spell I was under, that woman rose up and I said to my brother, you cannot, I will not accept losing this house with the horses. If I lose the house, I am keeping the stables. And he said, you can't. And every time I put the house on the market, this is a funny story. Every time I put the house on the market, he tell the estate agents, sell the, sell the land and paddock. And I tell them not. And the estate agents kept firing us, one after the other. They kept firing us. And in the end, we're running out of time. And the mortgage company was like, no, no, you've got to sell, you've got to sell. So I sold the house on Facebook. That's called being uh, opportunistic, right? There's always a solution. When you're starting over, you never give up. You keep looking, you keep diving, you keep digging. There's always a solution. So I sold the house on Facebook and I kept my land and I kept my stables. But it felt like I was like living in my car again. So I didn't have anywhere to live. And what do you do? How do you rent with a dog and a cat? And so I, again, I reached out and the universe supported me. And I found this amazing house to rent because I didn't give up because I knew that I'm worthy of a life that I love. And I knew that starting over seems like the scariest thing, but sometimes miracles and angels and incredible things come from starting over, things you can't even imagine. Now I live in this beautiful house, I've got my land and my paddock, and out of all that, I became a speaker. And I tell my story, and I help people get up, literally out of their lives and move on to create a life they love. And that's what I do for a living. What an incredible thing to be able to do. But if I hadn't been that person who'd been told I couldn't have what I wanted, if I hadn't been that person who was knocked to the floor, if I hadn't been that person who lost their home now twice <laughs> and had literally backed up only having a car twice, but knowing that no matter what, you can get up as long as you find a tiny step. If you find a tiny hope. My grandmother used to say to me when it was a rainy day and there was no sign of the sunshine. She'd say, if you saw a tiny blue speck in the sky, that blue handkerchief of, of blue sky would grow and the sun would come out. It doesn't always. But that was, she, she used to tell me that when I was a little girl. And sometimes it was true. I'd see a tiny patch of blue in England. We have terrible weather, it rains all the time. And then the blue would grow and then it would be a sunny day. So you need to look for that patch of blue in your life. No matter what's happening right now, we've had two years of uncertainty and doubt, fear. We've lost jobs, but we've also realized what we love. Some of us lost our jobs and thought, well, I'm not doing that anymore. Everything in life, when you have to start over, is an opportunity. Every day when we wake up, you're starting over. Every moment you have an opportunity to recreate a life you love. You must never give up. Giving up, you never lost until you quit. There's always possibility. And you have to just say, ask everyone around you. If someone is listening to this, you're like, well, I have no one to talk to. Reach out to me, reach out to the people here. Reach out on Facebook, reach out on Instagram. You will be amazed if you, no matter how bad things are, reach out to somebody, walk somewhere, talk to someone. There is always a possibility as long as you move and be prepared to start over. Well, that's what I wanted to share with you today, guys. And I hope that you are listening, that you are going to start 2nd of January, 2022 with a new perspective, knowing that you never, ever give up and that you can start over every single day and you are worthy of a life that you love. Hmm. Wow. So much power and beauty and realness in that message, Lisa. Thank you so much. 
So we have a few viewers currently live. So if you are listening, feel free to post us some comments. If you would like to follow up on that message and reach out to Lisa and ask some follow up questions. And um, yeah, the, the panel is also open for us just to exchange some, some thoughts and insights. And what struck me was this, first of all, seedling of of this dream about horses right like you know where do these things come from right like you know why did you have that dream moving you throughout your life pretty much forever right like it's it's so beautiful and 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 some of us have that but stop listening to it you know and some of us actually don't have that and have to work hard to discover that and also that resilience i wonder you know like where did that come from <laughs> you know that's so much perseverance to to continue to re be reborn i guess and, and remerge so so that's the few kind of threads of inquiry that i would perhaps like to throw in there and i'm happy to hear what um, others have to offer if i can just say i think it comes the end it comes from loving something a lot having a passion and i think i was i was lucky enough to be allowed to be passionate just although some people were not supportive of me my mother was very supportive of me and if you love something a lot if you have a, a reason a why that will help you push through yeah and and we all have a why and a reason but like you said sometimes we lose it and one of the most important things is to find your why in life find what lights you up find what you're aligned with and this we're not taught this in school this is the most important thing we should be taught in school is what moves you what makes you want to get up every day it's not i went and worked in the city because that's why i thought i'd make lots of money i hated it i looked out the window and wanted to cry every day luckily I, i'm not going to there was something in me that I'm not going to endure that. Most people endure that, and I take my hat off to them. But, but you know, we're not taught who are you? What are your? We all have a super gift. We all have a superpower. You know, like the like the heroes in the Marvel comics. We all have superpowers. But who ever takes the time to work it out? No, you have to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an office worker, or or a nurse, or whatever. No, find you know, find who you are. I would love. To be something of like an academy where we help people find out who they really are when they're young, you know, because this is where you need to get get into it. Mm. Love that, thank you. Oh, I love it. I also share that dream of a of beautiful school, and and I know there already there's already seedlings of them. Um, yeah, I really loved your story, Lisa. Thank you so much for sharing. It's powerful. Wow, a lot. I love the. The moment on the carpet, it felt like that's the that's the receiving mode that I'm going to be talking about, where you just like where does where did that voice come from? What and and same with the love for horses. I think it's like there's there's something else supporting us that's not on the physical plane that that is 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 always there supporting us. And when we're when we kind of are still enough and can listen, and in your case, it feels like it was almost like. A moment of like giving up we are like okay like i don't know i don't know what else to do and you just kind of let go and focused on the carpet and that's kind of that's a form of meditation and then you just receive this guidance and, and that's really beautiful yeah good for you mm -hmm. and lisa my body was super excited <laughs> listening to you i came back in a little late but when i I love receiving people from my body and I can literally just feel my cells just celebrate with you over here. <laughs> Is that fun? So I can just feel my whole being smiling right now. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> I, I worked out my internet thing so I can now again. I'm here, guys. <laughs> great, great. Good to have you with us. Yes, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful message. Thank you so much. Um, just one of the things that you said that really touched me um, was understanding that we are worthy of having 
whether it be the life of our dreams or even just a better life than what we have. I work with people all the time that one of their biggest blocks is that they don't believe that they're worthy and that makes them not be able to move forward. And sometimes it takes those things in life, those really severe things like the pandemic to get us up off that carpet and going. Um, thank you so much for sharing um, your story. It was really um, beautiful and I feel even more inspired about my own life and, and where I'm going. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for being here today. Uh, I would also love to add in something, Lisa, you said the, the voices of the adults asking you, who are you to dream so big? And what I witnessed is that very often we have this voice in our head. Like, I work a lot with people who have these big dreams and and very like usually you don't have no idea how to reach them. Mm -hmm. Like even if it's just you with your dream. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then it's so so important, I think, to be gentle with yourself with this inner voice of who are you to dream so big. And then it's good to have a supportive to speak to someone who's not uh, um, a negative person, like who's not pushing it down the moment that you speak about it but this first moment where you dare to speak about it to have this in a nourishing supportive environment and then maybe you find others who, who say oh it's a great dream so what's the first, what's the one step that you take and not to to wait for this five-year plan because we will yeah. like i will speak about it later but it's to me it's not about this we don't have this plan it's it's old the old way of of doing things and now we have this dream and these this purpose the why pulling us forward and and then we can meet the right people and then things like this today can happen so um, yeah yeah i loved your story it's so great to move through and and what i also loved is that you were really aware of the pieces that you like the second time when you didn't let go of for example the stable and the horses you really knew what lights you up and this gave you the strength to move through it easier than before. Yeah, and mm. I think this is also something, it's an awareness process of being self-aware of what lights us up.